New research uncovers that most people want to retire at the age of 60. So here we're going to look at what we need to do in order to achieve that retirement goal. This video forms part of the Pension Income Planning Special Series, which I've linked in the description below. So don't forget to check that out and subscribe. The results on a recent study on ideal pension age has been reported by WICH and this study was undertaken by Aviva Pensions and they asked 2,000 people questions about retirement and that revealed that one in four people want to retire at the age of 60 and they see that as the ideal age. And with the state pension age already being at 66 and soon to increase to 67 and then 68 and possibly more, although the pension age is currently under review, then that does mean that we have to show much interest in our pension planning in order to achieve that retirement age of 60 and planning early is key. To be able to afford to retire at the age of 60, many people will have to bridge a large gap in their retirement income before their state pension kicks in. This is a tall order, but not impossible, and planning is key. If you have a firm and committed plan in place and know exactly what you want and need to achieve, then you are more likely to achieve it. So whilst the Aviva study found that one in four people want to retire at the age of 60, they also found that 20% of their respondents also want to retire at 55. So recent events have possibly made people reevaluate their priorities, particularly in light of COVID. And also with the government continually increasing state pension age, there's also been quite a lot of public backlash about this increase. So it is no surprise that many people want to retire at the age of 60, whilst they're hopefully still fit and healthy enough to be able to enjoy doing the things they want to do. And also to relieve themselves from the stresses of work and also that expensive commute. It does hold much appeal for that early retirement. So are these the main reasons why most people want to retire early? The results of the Aviva study show that 32% of those surveyed want to retire early to enjoy more freedom while they're still fit and healthy. And at the age of 60, we would hope to still be in good health to be able to enjoy that newfound freedom. And for those people who do taxing or physically demanding jobs, being relieved of the stress and physical exertion of work could actually have health and lifestyle benefits. Interestingly, 26% or just over one quarter of the respondents said that they could afford to retire early, so why not? And if you do want to retire early, say at the age of 60, we do need to generate quite large pension pots in order to be able to generate the income we need to support us until our state pension kicks in. So planning really is key and taking action to make that happen. In third place, 23% of respondents said that reassessing their priorities was their reason for early retirement and certainly recent events will play a part here. Many of us have recently learned to value those things in life that we used to take for granted. And in fourth place, 20% said spending more time with their family is the reason for early retirement, which is linked to reassessing their priorities. And both getting 19% of the reasons for wanting to retire early is being tired or bored of work or finding it too stressful. These reasons given come as no surprise and they are completely understandable. And as I said, people who work in either physically or mentally demanding jobs may start to find it hard once they reach their 60s. Out of those people surveyed who had retired early, most of them said they were happier, healthier and had better relationships with friends and family. All is not sunny though. 47% of respondents said that they had money worries after they had retired early and the situation is worse for women. And there, 50% of women said their financial situation had got worse after early retirement. This is likely caused by women often having a shortfall in their pensions when compared to men and there are many factors that contribute to that and they include things like women often taking time out of work to look after children but also due to the gender pay gap where women's pensions are really hit hard because of this difference in salaries for equivalent jobs. So what can we learn from those people who have been able to afford to retire early? The results in this table reported by WICH and provided by the Aviva Research show that 32% of the people retired early had a defined benefit pension scheme. These types of pension schemes are more like gold dust these days but they used to be much more common. Some of these defined benefit pension schemes also had rules written into them which allowed people to retire early on full pension benefits and I used to be a member of such a scheme which had a so-called rule of 85. And that basically meant that if your age plus your number of years of service added up to 85, you could retire on full pension benefits. 
So many people with defined benefit pension schemes who are already retired may have had a similar rule written into their pension benefit package. With my defined benefit pension plan, that rule no longer exists, but I still have that pension plan, which is deferred at the moment, and I can claim that from the age of 65, and I see that as like my surrogate state pension. So there will be some retirees today who were part of defined benefit pension schemes, which enabled them to retire early with a guaranteed income. These days, most workplace pension schemes that people pay into will be defined contribution pension schemes rather than defined benefit. The next most common reason stated by 30% of the respondents that enables people to retire early is paying off their mortgage. And with many of us having huge mortgages these days due to the price of property, this comes as no surprise. And our mortgage payment is such a massive monthly expense, so once we do eventually pay off our mortgage, then our monthly income needs will drastically reduce because we no longer have that big monthly outgoing so we may find that we can actually live on a much reduced income to support our lifestyle. And because of this reduced income need, that could allow us to retire early. And this is why it's so important to know what your monthly expenses are for your pension planning, because if you don't know what your expenses are, you do not know what income you need to be able to afford to retire. So by listing all your essential spends and all your non-essential spends, you can get a good clear picture of how much money you typically spend each month and each year and that will help you plan your retirement income need. In third place, 29% of respondents said saving little and often allowed them to retire early. And this is something I advocate on my channel by saving regularly every month into a pension plan, your stocks and shares ISA for instance, by getting into the habit of saving every single month, then it will build up a nice pot of money, particularly with those compounding returns. Also, 19% of those who responded to the survey said that using any bonuses or pay rises wisely helped them to retire early. So when you do get a pay rise or if you're lucky enough to get a bonus, then the temptation can be to actually go and spend more money. But if you do use your pay rises and bonuses wisely, then you could be paying that money to grow your future income needs. Those who choose to start spending more, this is called lifestyle inflation and we have enough inflation going on in our lives, so why create our own as well? With workplace pensions, deductions are made on a percentage of your salary. So when you do get a pay rise, then your pension contributions will slightly increase as well. But if you do get a pay rise, then why not instruct payroll to increase your pension contributions? So if you got a 4% pay rise, why not ask them to increase your pension contributions by 2%? And by increasing your pension contributions, it will help you save faster for your retirement income needs and hopefully provide you with a comfortable retirement. The other benefit, of course, is that by increasing your pension contributions, you will also reduce the amount of tax and national insurance you pay, so it is a win-win situation. The same goes for any bonus payments you may receive. You could instruct payroll to pay it directly into your pension. And just think about it, if you do choose to earn that bonus, then you're only going to lose a load of it in deductions. So why not just pay the whole lot into your pension and get the full amount paid into that pension pot? Bonuses are also money that you wouldn't have otherwise received, so why not use it to grow your future income needs? Other factors that enable people to retire early are redundancy payouts and inheritance, but these are factors that are outside of our control. So when planning your retirement income, you really need to focus on those areas that are within your control. So things like clearing your mortgage and other debts, paying little and often into a pension plan, and also using pay rises and bonuses wisely to help grow your future wealth. These are all things that are within our control. So in order to retire early, you need to be working out what your income need will be, and that will be based upon your expenses, and then work out how much money you need to save up to be able to generate that level of income, and then make a plan and take action to make it happen. I have done videos on how much income you can generate from different sized pension pots, and they are linked in the description below and form part of this pension income planning series. I will be adding more videos to this series, so don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell. Well, I hope these insights were useful, and that's all for now, and thanks for watching.